The Asia-Pacific War, a significant theatre of World War II, began long before the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. It started with Japan's invasion of China in 1937. This conflict would eventually draw in the United States and other world powers. The war spanned vast distances across the Pacific Ocean and Southeast Asia. Japan's expansionist policies in the 1930s set the stage for this brutal conflict. They sought to create a self-sufficient empire in Asia. This ambition put them on a collision course with Western powers. The Japanese military believed they could achieve a quick victory. They hoped to force the US and its allies to negotiate a favorable peace settlement. However, the reality of the war proved far different from Japan's expectations. The conflict lasted nearly four years after Pearl Harbor. It involved some of the most intense naval battles in history. The human cost was staggering with millions of military and civilian casualties on all sides. Many factors contributed to Japan's defeat. US military might is often cited as the primary reason, but was it the only factor? The United States entered World War II with significant advantages. It had a large population and vast natural resources. These factors allowed for rapid military expansion. The US could produce weapons, ships and aircraft on an unprecedented scale. This industrial might would prove crucial in the long war against Japan. The US Navy in particular played a pivotal role in the Pacific War. After initial setbacks, including the devastating attack on Pearl Harbor, the Navy rebounded quickly. It adopted new tactics and technologies. The US submarine force was especially effective. It decimated Japan's merchant fleet, choking off vital resources from the home islands. American air power also proved decisive. Strategic bombing campaigns targeted Japan's industrial centers, crippling Japan's war-making capacity. On land, US forces, often fighting alongside Allied troops, gradually pushed back Japanese forces. Island-hopping campaigns brought American forces ever closer to Japan. Several crucial battles marked turning points in the Pacific War. The Battle of Midway in June 1942 was perhaps the most significant. US forces sank four Japanese aircraft carriers. This victory halted Japan's eastward expansion. The Guadalcanal campaign lasting from August 1942 to February 1943 was another pivotal moment. It marked the first major Allied offensive in the Pacific. The grueling battle of attrition favored the U.S. Japan could not replace its losses as easily as the Americans. The Battle of the Philippine Sea in June 1944 was a decisive naval engagement. U.S. forces destroyed hundreds of Japanese aircraft, effectively ending Japan's ability to conduct large-scale naval operations. The Battle of Iwo Jima in early 1945 brought U.S. forces to Japan's doorstep. The island's capture provided a base for fighter escorts on raids against Japanese cities. While U.S. military might was formidable, Japan's economic weaknesses played a crucial role in its defeat. Japan lacked many essential raw materials. It relied heavily on imports to fuel its war machine. As the U.S. submarine campaign intensified, these supply lines were severely disrupted. Japan's industrial base was also much smaller than that of the United States. It couldn't match the pace of American production. For every ship or plane Japan built, the U.S. could produce several. This disparity grew more pronounced as the war progressed. The Japanese economy was further strained by the demands of its far-flung empire. Food shortages became a severe problem for Japan as the war dragged on. The US naval blockade prevented food imports. By the war's end, many Japanese civilians were on the brink of starvation. Section 5, Internal Conflicts and Strategic Missteps. Japan's defeat wasn't solely due to external factors. Internal conflicts and strategic errors played a significant role. The Japanese military leadership was often divided. There were rivalries between the Army and Navy. These conflicts led to poor coordination and wasted resources. Strategic decisions often favored offensive operations over defense. This approach left Japan vulnerable as the tide of war turned. The decision to attack Pearl Harbor, while initially successful, ultimately proved disastrous. It united the American public behind the war effort. It also underestimated the U.S.'s ability to recover and retaliate. 
Japan's treatment of conquered peoples was often harsh. This cruelty fostered resistance movements in occupied territories. These insurgencies tied down Japanese troops and provided valuable intelligence to Allied forces. The Japanese High Command also made critical errors in assessing American resolve. Section 6. The Role of Allied Powers While the United States was the primary opponent of Japan in the Pacific, other Allied powers played crucial roles. The British Empire, including Australia and New Zealand, committed significant forces to the war. They fought in Southeast Asia and the South Pacific. These efforts tied down Japanese forces that might otherwise have been used elsewhere. China, despite being weakened by years of war and internal strife, tied down millions of Japanese troops. The Chinese resistance prevented Japan from fully exploiting the resources of mainland Asia. The Soviet Union, while initially neutral in the Pacific War, played a significant role in Japan's defeat. The threat of Soviet intervention kept large Japanese forces in Manchuria. When the USSR did declare war in August 1945, it rapidly defeated Japan's Kwantung army in Manchuria. The combined efforts of these Allied powers stretched Japan's resources to the breaking point. They forced Japan to defend a vast perimeter, making it vulnerable to the focused attacks of US forces. Section 7, Technological Advancements and Resource Disparities The Pacific War saw rapid technological advancements on both sides. However, the United States had a clear advantage in this area. American scientists and engineers produced innovations at a staggering pace. New radar systems, improved aircraft designs and better weapons gave US forces an edge. Japan struggled to keep up with these advancements. Its smaller industrial base and limited access to raw materials hampered research and development. While Japanese weapons were often well designed, they couldn't be produced in sufficient numbers. Quality began to suffer as shortages became more acute. The disparity in resources between Japan and the US was stark. America's vast oil reserves allowed it to fuel a massive naval fleet. Japan, lacking domestic oil, saw its operations increasingly constrained by fuel shortages. Section 8. The Impact of the Nuclear Bombs the use of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945 is often seen as the final blow that forced Japan's surrender. These weapons caused unprecedented destruction. They demonstrated a level of destructive power that Japan could not hope to match or defend against. The psychological impact of the bombs was immense. Japanese leaders realized that further resistance would lead to the annihilation of their cities. The emperor, previously seen as divine and infallible, intervened to end the war. This decision broke a deadlock within the Japanese leadership. However, the role of the atomic bombs in Japan's defeat is still debated by historians. Some argue that Japan was already on the verge of surrender. The Soviet declaration of war on August 8, they contend, was equally important in forcing Japan's capitulation. Regardless of their exact impact, the atomic bombs symbolized the technological and industrial gap between Japan and the United States. Section 9. Analyzing the factors U.S. military might versus other elements. When weighing the factors that led to Japan's defeat, U.S. military might clearly played a crucial role. The sheer scale of American military production was overwhelming. The skill and bravery of U.S. servicemen turned this potential into battlefield reality. Key victories like Midway and the Philippine Sea crushed Japan's offensive capabilities. However, it's important to recognize that U.S. military power did not exist in a vacuum. It was built on the foundation of America's vast economic strength. The ability to outproduce Japan in every category of war materiel was perhaps even more important than tactical or strategic brilliance. Japan's own weaknesses and mistakes contributed significantly to its defeat. Its limited resource base, internal conflicts, and strategic errors compounded the challenges posed by U.S. military power. The contributions of other Allied powers, while often overshadowed by the U.S. effort, were also crucial. They forced Japan to disperse its forces and resources. The Section 10, Conclusion, a multifaceted defeat. In conclusion, while U.S. military might was undoubtedly a primary factor in Japan's defeat, it was not the only one. The Asia-Pacific War was lost by Japan due to a complex interplay of factors. American military power, economic strength and technological superiority combined with Japan's own weaknesses and mistakes. 
The United States brought overwhelming force to bear against Japan. Its ability to project power across the vast Pacific was unmatched. Key battles turned the tide of war decisively in America's favor. The strategic bombing campaign, culminating in the use of atomic weapons, showcased the destructive potential of US military might. However, this military power was built on the foundation of America's economic and industrial strength. Japan's limited resource base and vulnerable supply lines made it impossible to match this production. Economic factors thus played a role equal to, if not greater than, pure military might. In the end, Japan's defeat was the result of a perfect storm of factors, with US military might serving as the most visible but not sole cause of its downfall.